Okay, this time we're going to talk about Dynamic SQL. And I'm talking about this because it comes up an awful lot, and you see an awful lot of really ugly Dynamic SQL. And it's kind of in the nature of it, right? And, you know, initially I wanted to write this, I wanted to do this video about Dynamic SQL, SQL and SPs, but, you know, it occurs everywhere. I mean, I think it occurs probably mostly in SPs, but anywhere you have Dynamic SQL, this is really going to be applicable. So, what I want to do is I want to show you a couple, uh, a couple really good methods for getting around some really, really hellish uh, dynamic SQL. And as you can see on the screen here, I've actually prepared something this time, so you don't have to sit here and watch me type all this, because it kind of actually has to be worked out a little bit, right? So, okay, let's get into it. Um, the example I'm using here is this really thick string code, and this is an example I actually did on... Uh, in an article on SQL Server Central about, let's see, what is this, 08? So about three or four years ago, give or take. And uh, I was running back across it and thought that this would make a really good video. So um, what we've got here, and I'll just run this because it's really easy. Okay, so we're building a dynamic, uh, a dynamic select here, right? And it turns out I need a space there. There we go. Um, so select column one as hello kitty, column two as today is today, and column three as war is hell from table one. And then I'm just going to print that. And there we go. Now I've got my, my space in there. Okay. Control R. Now, the problem with this is it's just really hard to read. These escape characters, because you have to escape each one of these. If you want to build a dynamic string that has um, that has uh, a single quote in it since the string itself is single quoted see this string right here is single quoted this is a literal right if I wanted to have a string inside of there if I wanted to have column I couldn't just do this right that's gonna throw the entire thing each one of these has to be done twice and then it will escape the sequence Okay, so, uh, and I'll show you what that's going to look like there. There we go, and now column one is in single quotes. Let's get rid of that. So with all of these guys, I have seen some pretty thick uh, dynamic SQL strings, and this one isn't really that bad, but it, it's a good example. It shows you how they just build and build and build, right? Because these guys have three... Um, you know, if I were to have long strings in here with everything having to be in double quotes, then you would it would just be a quote fest. It would be just ridiculous to try to read this stuff. And when you need to add a new column or take a new column away, it can take quite a bit of time to troubleshoot um, exactly how many quotes need to be in and, you know, need to be in there and need to be taken out or whatnot. So, you know, what we're doing here is we're going to we're going to look at a couple methods for um, trying to clean this up a little bit so that it's easier to read and easier to add things. Now one of the first things I've got for you is something I came up with a few years ago. It's been quite a while. And uh, that's substituting a, uh, a variable that says param, but it's really a variable. So you declare a variable. SQ stands for single quote. Of course you can use anything you want, right? Um, define it as character 1 or var car 100, but character 1 is all you need, right? Because it's only one character. And then set that equal to character 39, which is actually the ASCII code for single quote. You could also do it like this, and that would work just as well. For some reason, I like the, I like the ASCII better, so we'll stick with that. So... <clears throat> If I were to do this, see I'm printing today, and now all I have to do is replace these double quotes right here that escape, all I have to do is replace them with my single quote. So when I do this right here, I still get my single quotes around, and it's much easier to read because now um, I can see where the quotes are. They're actually quoted around it. I like that. Um, it's a, it's a nice, easy approach that you can line up all your single quotes and you can very, very easily um, add and take something away um, without too much trouble. 
Now there's also another method here that I actually really like too because it's it gives you a little bit more flexibility. SQL's really smart sometimes and that is using quote name. And quote name does just what it says. It will it's a function that wraps anything inside of it in quotes. And one of the things I really like about this is not only is it smart um, but it's also flexible and that's one of the things that makes it so smart, right? So same thing, I've got at sq is character 1, I just named that, I, I just gave this variable, assigned last name to something, and at sq, and I used, uh, I used the escape method this time, but I could just as easily use character 39 here, right? So I'm going to print where last name equals quote name, last name, and then the single quote. So what this is saying is surround this guy with whatever this is. And that's all there is to it. So since I've got single quotes, when I run this, you see down here, I've got my single quotes, right? And it doesn't have to be single quotes either. I could make this square braces. And actually, if you don't set this to anything at all, if you just leave this part off of it like that, then it'll set it to, to square braces by default. Let me cancel out of that. Ah, there we go. Okay, so if I do this, and this is what I mean by it's smart. You're going to like this, because when I do this, notice how it surrounds it in square braces, even though I only specified the left brace. The same thing happens if I only specify the right brace. See, it, it's smart enough to know that it comes with a pair. Same thing comes if I do both of them. There you go, it's smart enough to know that. The same thing goes with parentheses. Right there. Same thing goes curly brackets right there and I've never actually tried mixing these before let me try let me mix a curly bracket and a square brace I wonder what I'll get never actually tried that before huh. I get curly braces so there you go and if I do this I'm just I'm just playing now guys so it's going to pick up the first one. So there you go, and use its pair, evidently. So I'll go back to there. So, and when I do stuff like this, I prefer to see that. It's just, it just keeps me from being confused. Now, one of the reasons I like this is because I can mix and match, right? With this method, even though it's really easy, and I have nothing against it, in fact, this is still the one I use most of the time, because I, I just don't need to switch that often. One of the things I really like about the quote name method is that within the same query, I can change what I want it to be quoted with from item to item. So I want this one to be curly braces or square braces, uh, and maybe I want this one to be curly braces like that. So I can mix and match that. So this one's in square braces. This one's in curly braces, and I can do whatever I want. Or maybe I want this one to be escaped like that. So one of them's in there, and one of, one of them's in square braces, and one of them's in single quotes. So this one's really flexible. Ah, come here. There we go. And I like that flexibility. But I also really like how easily you can line these guys up. Um, you can line up all of your single quotes, one one on top of the other one, and you don't have to worry about you don't have to worry about the function call. Um, now you could easily take this method. Now, now you know, of course, one of the um, uh, now one of the things that you'll you'll like about this is that you can you can turn that into a function call, right? You can turn this functionality into a function call and save the function in your database so you don't have to do the declare and and the set statement every single time. 
but it's usually not that big of a deal. I mean, you know, I've been using this method for years, and I absolutely love it. You know, I mean, I, I make that declare at the top of my SP, and it never has to change. It's like a constant, right? It never has to change throughout the entire SP, and I can use it anywhere I want to. Um, now, the quote name, like I said, is a little bit more uh, flexible, but I find that flexibility really isn't necessary all that often. But if you need the flexibility, you know, by all means, use it. I mean, I'm, I'm not against anything. I'm not against using anything that, that I need, right? Um, the one thing I really don't like, though, is this guy up here. I just can't stand to see this whole sea of, of tick marks. It just drives me crazy. Now, control R again. So, here's an, exa here's an example of uh, replacing with a variable. Here's an example of using quote name. And as I've already kind of alluded to, I've been talking about it a lot. Here's the original one rewritten with the single quotes. And you'll see it does the exact same thing. Yeah, what did I do? Oh, that's right. Um, I need to bring that declare back down here. There we go. Since I'm not running the entire code block, right? And it probably wouldn't hurt if I printed it every now and then. Huh. There. Now let's try it. There we go. Now I got what I was looking for. See? I lost my space here again. All I have to do is come in here and put that in there. Okay. So that's the first one rewritten. And I don't know about you, but I think that looks a lot better when I compare this to this up here. This is just awfulness waiting to happen. And then here is that exact same one written with quote name. And of course, since I'm using a variable with that, I'll have to... And then here's... well, uh, oh, I already have it. Good. Come here, and I've got the exact same thing written in quote name. So, there you go. That's a, a nice, easy way to, um, to find out, or a, a nice, easy way to do, to do uh, dynamic SQL. Now, <clears throat> if you're wanting to know how I knew that a single quote, where the hell did it go? Oh, I took it. That a single quote is character 39. Um, like I said, it comes from the ASCII code. And officially, how did I know? Well, you know, officially, I can't lie. My wife told me. Um, but I wrote this code years ago that I'll go ahead and post and, and I'll show it to you now that shows you it, it shows you uh, the ASCII codes for all of the, all of the SQL. So if you run this, there you go. This is all the ASCII codes. So if you, if you like the ASCII code idea and you want to use it, feel free and you can look it up here and you see here a character 39 is the single tick right I could have easily said character 38 before right let's come here and say character 38 and I'm gonna get it surrounded by ampersands so you know these guys up here at the beginning you know you get some unprintable characters here tab and whatnot um, probably some more unprintable characters throughout there, but you see the character set's pretty well represented here. So, you know, that's uh, I I used this for a long time, and it's it's very reliable. So anyway, um, I'll post this code, and you guys can play with it, and you're welcome to you're welcome to steal this code right here because it's excellent, and it's actually up on uh, SQL Server Central anyway. If you uh, search for my name. If you search for my name, uh, you'll actually find it under, uh, I think the article is called Get Away From Confusing Code, and uh, I pretty much summarized it all here anyway. So anyway, uh, good luck.